Continuing with our discussion of using slicing to find volume, we've seen now the, the method of doing this to find the volume of a cylinder. Let's now look at using the same technique to find the volume of a hemisphere of radius four. So I've sketched a picture here. And again, um, I'm just gonna use horizontal slices, but of course we could likewise do vertical. Once I've decided to cut this horizontally, then again, I wanna think about what my slices would look like. So if you're gonna cut this in a horizontal direction, then you're gonna get something not like that. Uh, let me try that again. Um, maybe something like this. And again, you wanna think about, I'm cutting this with a very small thickness to it. And because I'm cutting it horizontally, I'm chopping my height variable up in some sense. So this would be H sub K, the bottom H value would be H sub K minus one, and this total thickness I could represent as delta H. Now, in terms of the pieces we have here, just like we saw before, delta H, I wanna take the total height range and divide by the number of slices N. Remember that this is a hemisphere of radius four. So consequently, the distance between the base and the very topmost point is also four. So that's H sub K, or excuse me, delta H. To find H sub K, again, imagine that this hemisphere is sitting on the ground. Then we could see that the smallest value of H would be zero and we can add to that k delta h, which in this instance becomes 4k over n. And then to think about the volume here, what we can consider is this slice, and again, let me just to further emphasize it, I'll highlight this in. We're looking at the volume, I'll call it again v sub k, of this kth slice, and so I have to pause here and think about how I'm going to approximate that volume. When we looked at our cylinder example, we were actually able to find the volume exactly. But as is often the case with Riemann sums, we've seen that we don't need to find the volume exactly. We want to approximate it by something relatively simple. So this shape is what I'll call almost a cylinder. And just let's think about why that is the case. Um, I'm going to take this on a much smaller scale. You have this on a two dimensional picture, you have this kind of shape where the inner radius is, uh, or excuse me, the, the radius on the top is a little bit smaller than the radius on the bottom. So um, in some sense, if you want to think about this picture, Right, we've got a circle here and a smaller circle here. So it almost looks like a lampshade. But the idea is that we can fit that with a cylinder as an approximation. Just like we take a rectangle and force it to approximate something that's not quite a rectangle, we're gonna take these edges and force them to be straight. So for instance, um, we have lots of choices. What, what I'll do here is suppose you wanted to use um, H sub K. That would mean you choose this top um, kind of point here. And then this cylinder that I've shaded in pink would be an estimate of the volume of that lampshade type shape. So when I start to talk about the volume, um, it truly is here an approximation of the volume of the green shape. And again, I'm gonna fit it with a cylinder. And what we can think about here is that it's going to be pi times whatever the radius is that I've chosen for my pink cylinder squared times delta H. Okay, so I alluded to this in the cylinder video, but there's something very important here that we have to pause and notice. Um, so let me kind of emphasize this. Currently, the way I've expressed the volume is 
as uh, something that depends on R sub K. The volume of a slice depends on the value of hk. For comparison, that was not the case when we looked at the cylinder. Every single slice had the exact same volume. It didn't matter how far it was from the base. But you can look at this picture here and notice that any slice closer to the base is going to be larger than a, uh, in volume than a slice that's closer to the top. So as I change h, my volume of my slice changes. That means we should not expect to get a constant integrand like we did with the cylinder case. And the other complexity here is that I've already established that my um, integration variable is h. And that's by choosing to slice it so that I end up with this delta h. When I write this as an integral, I don't want to have other variables that than h involved. And right now I have this radius. And in particular, um, as hk changes, so does r sub k, right? The radius is affected by how far we are from the base. So that means that we should be able to come up with a way to relate r sub k back to h sub k. So um, we need to express this volume as a function of h sub k. So if you lump this back in with our cylinder example, even though there were no h sub k's present in our volume v sub k formula, if you look back at that, it was just four pi delta h, we could view that as a constant function of h. We don't want to have a situation where v sub k is represented as a function, not of h, but of other variables involved in there. I don't want to try to integrate r with respect to h if r is somehow a function of h. So how do we do this? And this is the part where I really want to come back to the knowledge of what this, this hemisphere looks like. And this part that we'll see here does very much depend on the shape. We'll also look at a, a cone and see that the, the way we connect the radius and the height changes in that case as well. So uh, let's jump to here. So I've, I've, what I've done here is imagine that you're looking at a kind of, you're looking at the hemisphere from the front and you're just getting a two dimensional view of it. So I'm ignor ignoring kind of what sits beyond this. What I've done here is again, shaded in the two dimensional region that corresponds to my V sub K my kth slice, if you will. And what I would hope to get out of this is a way that I can relate h sub k and r sub k. So need to relate h sub k and r sub k. Okay. So when we do this, um, what should stand out to you here is this right angle. It's a little bit hard to maybe I'll here. If you construct a triangle by connecting this kind of center value to the edge here, which I could have drawn a little more straight, um, you have a right triangle with the side lengths r sub k and h sub k. But importantly, we know the length of the hypotenuse here because this dotted line represents the radius and the radius of the hemisphere is four. So from Pythagorean theorem, we can now relate these. So we see that um, rk squared plus hk squared is equal to four squared. Now, if I go back up to what I know so far about volume, we know right now how volume depends on rk squared. So I wanna use this formula to, to isolate r sub, r sub k squared. And we see that that is equal to 16 minus hk squared. So in saying that v sub k is approximately pi times rk squared delta h, we can now replace rk squared with 16 minus hk 
squared. So this is another way to approximate the volume, and this is preferable because this is a function of h. So with that, um, if you wanted to approximate the entire volume, which I'll just again use v, we can take the sum of each of our approximate v sub k's from k equals 1 to n. And now I have, at least by setting up this Riemann sum, now I have an idea of the structure involved and I can see exactly what kind of integral I'm gonna get out of this. So, um, sending n to infinity, we're gonna get that the volume is exactly equal to the integral of pi times the quantity 16 minus h squared delta h becomes dh. And remember, in finding the numerical bounds, I come back up to my original picture. And I think about h as really measuring how far I am off of the ground here. And I, if I'm on the ground, it's 0. And if I'm up at the very top, it's 4, the radius of the hemisphere. So that sends me to 0 to 4. And at this stage, now we have enough information to compute the numerical value exactly here for the volume. If I anti-differentiate, I'm going to get 16h minus h cubed over 3, um, all times pi, and we're going to let h range from 0 to 4. If we plug in 4, we're going to get 16 times 4, which is 64, minus 64 over 3, so all times pi, and so we end up with 128 pi over 3 is our final answer. So one thing I do want to mention is you'll note that I made a choice back when I was drawing this in pink. And my choice here was to look at approximating this using the radius that derived from the top part of my slice. So corresponding to, in my case, h sub k. So you could say that I've arbitrarily chosen a right-hand sum. You could also have chosen r sub k minus 1 the radius of the very bottom, or anything in between. But the key thing is, regardless of, of how one makes that choice, as soon as I send n to infinity, these all converge to the definite integral. And so that choice does not affect the final appearance of my integral here.